Hi, I'm Lannan Facco from Spartan Controls, and today I'll be showing you an easy way you can install and calibrate a DLC 3000 onto a Fisher level arm. My first step will be to hang the displacer on the driver rod and then install the retainer pin. I can now slide the DLC onto the level arm and install my four retainer nuts. With the DLC attached and the displacer hanging on the driver rod, I can now tighten the 10 millimeter nut that is located in the bottom access door on the DLC. This connects the Hall effect sensor to the torque tube. I then close the access door and tighten down the set screw that locks the access door shut. I will now connect to my DLC using my 475 heart communicator and my Druck loop calibrator that has a 250 ohm resistor built into it. And using the clips provided, simply connect to the head. With the DLC powered up, I can now enter the configure menu, the guided setup, and then the instrument setup. It'll ask me if I have all the information available for my displacer. I will answer yes, since most of this information is available on the nameplate. It warns me I should remove it from the loop in case it is controlling some other process. I will choose displacer weight in pounds, displacer volume in cubic inches, and displacer length in inches because these are all the units that are given on the nameplate. A standard displacer weight for a Fisher displacer is 4.75 pounds as stated on the nameplate, but it is always a good idea to measure the displacer if you can. The standard volume of a Fisher displacer is 99 cubic inches, but again, it's always a good idea to double check your nameplate just to make sure. The displacer length can also be found on the nameplate, and in this case, it is 14 inches. The driver rod length is the distance from the center of the torque tube to the center of where the displacer hangs, and in my case, I have a 14 inch driver rod. For the left or right hand mounting, all you have to do is look at the DLC from the very front and decide whether or not the DLC is to the left or to the right of the displacer. And in my case, it is to the right of the displacer. For torque tube material, this is also on the nameplate. And mine is a Cayman L, which is also known as N05500. I will now select level as my measurement application. Even if I was planning to use it in an interface application, this is for calibration purposes. Since I am just calibrating it on the bench, I will use zero as my level offset. I will now select OK to this. This is just letting us know that the range values are being initialized. I will select direct acting since most processes in the real world are direct acting. For engineering units, I will select inches since I have been using inches as my standard for this application. I am setting the upper range value to 14 inches since I do have a 14 inch displacer. If I had a 32 inch displacer, I would set this value as 32 inches. I will set the lower range value to 0 inches since this is only being set up on the bench. I will press OK to these menus. It is basically telling me where the alert thresholds are being initialized to, as well as the temperature and dead band thresholds. This menu is just telling me that the alerts have been disabled and I can re-enable them by going into the alerts menu. This next screen will prompt me to enter the specific gravity of the process fluid. I am going to enter the value of the liquid I am using to calibrate the sensor, not the actual process fluid, unless of course I was actually calibrating the sensor with the process fluid. Since I am using water for calibration, I am going to enter a specific gravity of 1. I will press OK to this menu. It is just saying that the instrument setup is complete and it is ready for calibration. It says it can be returned automatic control. I will now go back to the configure menu, go into the calibration, primary, 
full calibration, min-max calibration. It warns you you should remove it from automatic control. It now tells us to adjust our process input to zero. This means having a dry displacer. With a dry displacer not bouncing around, press OK and it'll capture the steady state condition. It asks us to enter our density of our calibration fluid. In this case, we're using water, so we'll enter one. With the displacer completely submerged, I'll press OK, then OK again, and it will let me know if it's successfully captured the two points and display the information calculated. The loop can now be returned to automatic control if it is in fact in the process. If you set your DLC up on the bench like I did, and you're planning on using it in a level application, you can now navigate back to the configure menu, manual setup, process fluid, process fluid again, and then enter constant density. This is where you can enter your actual process fluid specific gravity. If it is in fact water, you can leave one in there. It'll now be ready for installation in the field. If you're planning on using your transmitter on an interface application, you can now navigate back to the configure menu, manual setup, variables, primary variable, and change PV. This is where you can select interface. It'll then get you to re-input your level offset. You'll still select direct acting if it's a direct acting process. Your engineering units still can be in inches and I'll keep my upper range value at 14 inches. Lower range value can stay at zero inches. And I'll press OK to acknowledge that the thresholds have been initialized. The alerts have been initialized. And now it can be returned to automatic control. You can now navigate back to manual setup Go to your process fluid, process fluids again, and then enter constant densities. This is where you can enter the specific gravity of your two process fluids on your interface application. In my case, I still have water and air, so I will still leave it as one and zero. Now that the transmitter is fully calibrated, it is ready for field installation. And that will conclude my brief overview on how to mount and calibrate a Fisher DLC position transmitter onto a Fisher level arm. Thanks for watching.